the last class we were we proceeded up to the point where we divided the parameter space a b parameter space as a and b this parameter space we had divided into boxes we say that this box which is between minus 1 and plus 1 this way and minus 1 and plus 1 this way mm. this box essentially represents a situation where in both the sides the map is stable in the left hand side and the right hand side in both sides the map is stable so you have got a evolution from period 1 orbit to a period 1 orbit in this part we decided that in this part uh, there will be a situation something similar to the border collision uh, something similar to the fold bifurcation or a saddle node bifurcation where but due to border collision where a pair of fixed points are born and out of that one would be stable and another will be unstable in this part we had decided that the situation will be similar but what will be born are two unstable periodic orbits so here it is a situation similar to the saddle node bifurcation but there is no node both are saddle and then we had gone to this part where we said that the situation is where a fixed point that was stable moves across the border and becomes unstable so a being between minus 1 and plus 1 means that the slope in the in the left hand side is less than 1 and that in the right hand side is is less than minus 1 so you have got a slope that is less than minus 1 a situation something like this in this side the slope is less than 1 and this side this is greater than less than minus 1 as it moves you will have a situation like this so this was a fixed point that was earlier stable now it has moved across the border and has become unstable and so there can be a large number of possibilities and we had explored the possibility of the existence of period 2 orbit up to this point we had come and we had decided that this part will be divided into cases uh, this was the range of occurrence I should not say existence because it the period 2 orbit exists over the whole range but uh, this is the range of occurrence of period 2 orbit now the, there are two boundaries we had decided this boundary represents the situation a b is equal to minus 1 and this boundary represents situation a b is equal to plus 1 right so how did we arrive at that we simply looked at the the condition of existence of the period 2 orbit and then we said that it, this orbit will be stable if the product of the two slopes a b is less than 1 in magnitude and that violation happens in these two places but we also saw that at this point there are two things that are happening not only that the a b becoming equal to plus 1 means that this fellow is now becoming unstable not only that we decide that in this part the period 2 orbit will exist for mu greater than 0 and in this part the, the period 2 orbit will exist for mu less than 0 ok so if say we take a point here that means we take some value of, of a b which is within this zone means a is taken between these two parts and b is taken less than minus 1 suppose then what is the behavior going to be as mu is varied from negative value to positive value we should understand that see when in the left hand side when mu is less than 0 
then the slope was between minus 1 and plus 1 a value of a represents that that was between minus 1 and plus 1. So, for negative value of mu it would be stable for positive value of mu it becomes unstable and that is when the period 2 orbit exists. So, the behavior is simply a period doubling a period doubling bifurcation. So, if you uh, now look at the computer screen we can show that bifurcation for a specific set of parameter values. Okay. So, you see the, the this is a bifurcation diagram drawn from top to bottom where the period 1 orbit comes at this point hits the border and then a period 2 orbit emerges. Now, one important distinction between the standard period doubling bifurcation that you have so seen so far uh, is where you have a period doubling like this there these two orbits emerge orthogonally from the original orbit like this and in this case it goes like this. So, uh, they go at acute angle, but remember in both the cases this unstable period 1 orbit continues here also the unstable period 1 or orbit continues. Okay. So, we have a typical period doubling induced by border collision here. What happens if you take a parameter combination of parameter that is here? If you take a combination of parameter that is here, then it a, a, a peculiar situation is there. So, that uh, let me draw in a fresh page. We are talking about the bifurcation diagram. So, say this is my mu axis and this is my x. What will you see? see? Suppose this is mu is equal to 0. Hmm? So, before mu is equal to 0 situation reaches, there will be a stable periodic orbit okay? that becomes x equal to 0 at mu equal to 0 for this parameter for this uh, map. So, it goes and hits after that the fixed point becomes unstable and it emerges and the period 2 orbit yes it exists, but it exists in the same side as mu negative. So, this is a period 2 orbit which means the period 2 orbit exists in the same side where the period 1 orbit was stable and in this side there is nothing stable. So, this is a typical subcritical period doubling this is a typical subcritical period doubling subcritical means where the period 2 orbit exists in a sim same side where the period 1 orbit was there. It is if you, if you uh, figure out how will it look in the typical smooth situation it is like this and at this point it becomes unstable and the period 2 orbit it actually happens hmm? it actually happens in many smooth maps. So, this is the subcritical. So, here is the situation that is similar to that, but in a period doubling or in a, in a, in a uh, non smooth uh, situation clear. So, we have understood what happens here. What happens here? The period 2 orbit actually becomes unstable. If you go across this period 2 orbit becomes unstable then what? Now, when the period 2 orbit is still exists, but becomes unstable and a b becoming equal to minus 1 means period 2 orbit undergoes a period doubling bifurcation. Hmm. So, there is a period doubling bifurcation. So, this fellow becomes unstable period 2 orbit no longer exists then we have to face the next question will a period 3 orbit exist, will a period 4 orbit exist, will a period all these periodicities exist, will chaotic orbit exist, we will have to face that question. Good. How do we face the question will a period 3 orbit exist? See the way we tackled the situation of the period 2 orbit was that we had 
uh, say this is the uh, zero point, this is the x coordinate and there was one point in the left hand side that mapped to the right hand side and this point again mapped back. We had worked on this condition and then say that this orbit will, will exist so long as this point is in the left hand side and this point in the right hand side. Okay. In case of the, we are talking about this kind of a situation, you might notice that there can be a, okay, let me draw again to be clear. So, a situation where you have got a f like this and here it is like this. You can see if you start from here, there can be a large number of iterates going like this. Okay. And finally, it's somewhere it will come back. Now, you notice that here there is nothing that prevents a more than one iterate in the left hand side. So, there can be two iterates in the left hand side, but once it falls here, it, it comes back. Right. So, it stands to reason that we should actually consider if we consider period 3 orbits that, that is there are two possibilities. It could be two points to the left and one point to the right or one point to the left and two point to the right. It will be it'll more logical to consider the two points to the left condition. So, what will we consider? We will say that here is a 0 point, there is one point here, another point here and a third point here. So, it goes like this, it goes like that and it comes back like this. L, L, R. So, how we will work out the existence of this orbit? Suppose we start from this point. Uh, I would prefer to start from this point because that is actually determine the condition. So, this point maps to the R, then comes here, then comes here. We will say starting point x n. So, x n plus 1 is equal to a x n plus mu because it is in the left hand side. Then x n plus 2 is equal to now this fellow is in the right hand side. So, it will be met by the right hand side equation b a x n plus mu plus mu right. Now, it has come here. Now, again with the help of the left hand map x n plus 3 is equal to a b a x n plus mu plus mu right. Now, this fellow must be equal to x n in order for this orbit to be to occur. So, just solve this equation, solve this, if you solve this equation, you get a value of x n is equal to something, some expression you will get. Now, that expression is the expression for this point, remember it is not this point or this point, why? Because in order to find out for this point, you will have to map twice in the left and then on the right. While if you want to find this point, then you have to find first, you have to map first with the right map and then twice in the left map that we have not done. So, we have done for this point. Now, notice that when this point is stable, this particular orbit is stable, this point must be to the left because that is the condition that we have assumed. Hmm. So, the condition for existence of the period 3 orbit will be this number that you get here should be negative, huh? this should be just consider, consider the conditions of violation of this, this can be violated the moment it hits the border, can this hit the border, this point, no not before this, this fellow hits the border. So, there is no point considering this, this point, can this point go hit the border, if it does then all the points will be in the left hand side. If all the points are in the left hand side, they cannot be a periodic orbit. Why? Because it is a in, in each side is linear. If it is linear, it could be only a periodic or period 1 orbit, but you cannot have a high periodic orbit in a linear map. Hmm? So, the only condition is this fellow should be negative. 
that is the existence condition. So, this is the existence condition. Can you, con can you find it? Not difficult, doable by hand. Now, what is the condition for stability? This, this particular orbit will be stable so long as there are two points to the left and there is one point in the right. So, the stability condition is A square B is equal to this magnitude that should be less than less than 1, then it is stable. And obviously, this can also be violated in two possible ways. Hmm? This can also be violated in two possible ways. If you consider the period doubling condition, then A square B is equal to minus 1 is one violation condition. So, we obtain two possible conditions in which this orbit either ceases to exist or it ceases to be stable. Hmm? Now, if we superimpose that on this, you will get a range that is something like this. Here is the condition for ex existence and here is the condition for stability that we just talked about. Hmm? Similarly, you can find out the condition for existence stability for the period 4 orbit, it will be like this. Hmm? And fine. So, there will be all sorts of orbits like this and then uh, let us check out if this is really true. Suppose, I take a point here, which means I take this particular value of A and B, particular combination of A and B. If we do that, then as mu varies from negative value to the positive value, what will be the behavior of the bifurcation? What will we see? For mu less than 0, it is still stable because it is between a, a is between minus 1 and plus 1 and as mu goes beyond 0, then what happens? It is a period 3 orbit. So, it is a direct transition from period 1 to period 3. Let us see. Uh, I have taken a parameter in that range, right. It is a period 1 to period 3, direct transition from period 1 to period 3, where you see the bifurcation diagram looking like this. very peculiar cannot ever happen in a smooth map, but can happen in a piecewise smooth map. Hmm? Similarly, if you take a point in the period 4 tongue, these are called tongues. Huh? If you take a point in the period 4 tongue, then you will have period 1 to directly to period 4 orbit. Want to see? Okay. Now, if now I take the parameter mu to be positive and I vary the, the bifurcation parameter A like this, what will you see? Here it will be a period 2 orbit, then uh, here it will be chaotic or uh, here it will be a period 3 orbit, here it will be a period 4 orbit and so on and so forth and in between if period 2 orbit is not there and period 3 orbit has not yet been born, so the periodic orbits will not be, any other periodic orbit will not be there, but still the orbit will be content bounded and therefore, the only thing that can happen is a chaotic orbit. Hmm? Uh, let me 
show an example in between these two between period 2 and period 3 uh, between period 2 tongue and period 3 tongue I am taking a, a parameter value and then we will see. means right. So, this is a situation where there is a direct transition from a periodic orbit to a chaotic orbit that is another peculiar thing that can happen in non smooth map it cannot happen in smooth map. Okay. As I told you if you instead take uh, a as the bifurcation parameter with the mu value kept at a positive frame, then what will happen? You will not have the period 1 to whatever that kind of bifurcation, why? Because it is already mu is already positive. So, you see, let us see, let us let us do that and you will be surprised. So, uh, let us move it from 0 to 1, yes, fine. So, initially in this part it was period 2, then a narrow band of chaos, then you had period 3, then a another a band of chaos, then you had period 4 and you again you have a chaotic orbit. What does it mean? It means that it is a period adding cascade. Hmm? So, under such situations you are likely to see period adding cascade. In fact, in many experimental situations people have observed period adding cascades and this forms one of the explanations of what mechanism can give rise to the period adding cascade, clear. Okay, so, we have understood the, the whole character of the parameter space and as I told you the whole thing is symmetrical about this 45 degree line. So, whatever happens in this part we have explored that the same thing happens in this part if mu is varied from a positive value to a negative value. So, there is nothing new in this part, I do not really need to cover that. Hmm. Now, this whatever I have said that was the simplest possible case, simplest possible in the sense that it is a one dimensional map, it is a piece by linear map and therefore, everything can be worked out by hand every situation of the combination of A and B, you can draw the graph of the map and work out by cobweb diagrams how the behavior is going to be. So, this is rather simple, but this forms the ground on which most studies on the behavior of non-smooth maps actually are done, because this can be easily worked out. Now, let us uh, go to a relatively more complicated situation, where we are considering two dimensional maps. Hmm. So, 1 D is simple. So, let us go to the next level of complexity. Uh, here what kind of situation are you considering? In a 1 D map we are considering situation where there was two sides each with a different functional form. Here also we will side uh, you, you will consider that. So, suppose this is my state space but in this case we will have to consider x and y because it is 2D. In this two dimensional state space there will be some kind of a border that divides the, the state space and in this part there will be one functional form say f 1 and this is f 2. Initially, let us consider the situation with um, hats. That means the state space is x hat y hat state space. Why I will come to that later. This was this is necessary so that we can later deal with relatively small number of notations. So, it is actually 
a map where uh, f of x hat y hat mu is given as f 1 x hat y hat mu f 2 x hat y hat mu this is for x hat y hat in say region 1 and this is for x hat y hat in region 2. So, that is the situation that we start from where as I told you that in practical situations of uh, piece by smooth dynamical systems switching systems you are likely to come across this kind of uh, maps discrete and dynamical systems. So, what we will do? We are considering a situation where a fixed point say it was here for some value of the parameter mu and then as you change the parameter it hits the border. Hmm. Now, in order to do that uh, obtain the normal form it will be logical the logical course of action should be that we will take only the local linear neighborhood of the border crossing fixed point. We will only consider the local linear neighborhood of the border crossing fixed point. Hmm. Clear? Fine. This we will do through a series of coordinate transformations. Now, what is the first transformation that comes to your mind? First thing that we will do is your x coordinate, y coordinate, the axis are anywhere. First thing I would like to do is to get the y axis here along the, the border. That will be the first thing that I would like to do. Get the y axis here so that the fixed point crosses the y axis. What kind of uh, parameter or uh, coordinate transformation will be necessary? We will do it by uh, defining a new coordinate x tilde which is x hat minus h of h is the, the equation of the huh, h of y tilde uh, say so let the parameter be mu parameter be rho because I will come back to the mu parameter later if this parameter be rho. So, if you define it this way then then your x tilde because I have already subtracted the position of the the border and therefore, my y axis always is my uh, border line border line has been moved to the y axis. Okay. So, this and y tilde is equal to y hat let that be the same right. So, we had started with uh, okay, let us start with g so that we later come to uh, f. So, this is g 1 and g 2. So, we have then the map as g of it was x hat y hat x hat is now written in terms of x tilde it is x tilde plus h of y tilde rho comma y tilde rho this is the map then so i have just substituted for x now let us call it f that is why I, I sort of kept f and started with g because I wanted to later do with f. This is function of x tilde y tilde and rho. So, that is the first coordinate transformation that we have done. Okay. So, the border is now the Okay. Hmm. 
Now, now we need to do something because now the border collision can occur for any value of rho. These are rho. For any value of rho. Now we would like to normalize that. So there will have to be a coordinate transformation so that things are uh, things happen for the parameter value of zero. So that is what we are trying to do now. Hmm. So suppose suppose uh, at rho is equal to rho naught. Hmm, uh, the map. Has a fixed point on the border. So what happens? As you change the row, at some point it hits the border. And suppose that parameter value is row naught, and we'll now make some change so that this thing becomes happens at zero. So now we'll say. Uh, now we need to do the do that coordinate transformation, but how the coordinate transformation is done? Let me illustrate that with a with the next figure. So where did we start? We started with a border something like this, hmm? and at this point, it was here. At rho is equal to rho naught, and the position was like this. Hmm? We define that. The tangent along this direction, the tangent along this direction, let that be called my uh, say new y coordinate. Okay. Now, if you have this and you have the map already, then you can find out where this this vector maps. So, suppose this vector maps to some place like this. Let that be, could that be called the x. So what have we done? We said that okay, at rho naught my position is here. Then I will take a vector along the uh, border, and we'll say let that be my y vector. The y vector maps somewhere, and that vector we'll call it the x vector. That will require a coordinate transformation, so we are actually making that coordinate transformation, uh, so that uh, if there is a unit vector e one in this direction, and that maps to the unit vector e two, then this direction will call y, and this direction will call x. So it is actually consider considering the unit vector. We consider the unit vector and where it maps. Okay, so is is a, is, a, is a new coordinate understood? New x is this, new y is this. And how have we defined it? We say that uh, we know that my fixed point is now on the border at rho is equal to rho naught. Hmm. We make a tangent and take a unit vector e one and find out where the unit vector maps in this next iterate. That's e two. We say that now my y one y uh, y direction is along e one and x direction is along e two. That is the coordinate transformation that we have done, and this is your my fixed point, new fixed point, hmm? new uh, origin. If this is my new origin, this is x axis, this is y axis, then we can now write down the actual uh, transformation that we have done. Hmm? Uh, so we define the parameter mu bar is equal to rho minus rho naught. What does it mean? It means that border collision happens at mu is equal to zero. Mu bar is equal to zero. Hmm? Why mu bar? I'll come to that later. We'll later correct it. Okay, so that
So, there are few things that you have done. We have changed the coordinates in terms of x and y and we have also changed the coordinate in terms of the mu, the parameter. Hmm. Now, what is the state space now? Our state space is now divided into two halves, one half this here, another half here, left and right. Hmm, the, it, it is divided into two, two parts. For x bar less than 0, it is left half. For x bar greater than 0, it is right half. We can now define it. Earlier, we could not. Hmm. So, L is x bar less than 0, R is x bar greater than 0. No, no, they are different. I am, I am now defining this bar quantity. Huh? We started with tilde, we started with hat, came to tilde and then we are doing another thing, a new thing which is the bar. Hmm. That means, after that stage, we after having reached the stage of the uh, tilde, we only move the origin uh, to the border, but then also having moved the origin to the border, then also we have, we have to move it, so that we get the, the right coordinates, huh? that is what we are doing. And for that we have defined the coordinates in a, in a specific way. And the moment we define it that way, something will happen, you, you will see that. Hmm. So now, we have the map as uh, f, x bar, y bar and mu bar. This can be written as this is f1 of x bar, y bar, mu bar and f2 of x bar, y bar, mu bar in the two halves. Hmm? This is in this half and this is in this half. Now, so far these functions, these were nonlinear functions. Initially, when we started, these functions were nonlinear functions. We had only changed the coordinates, but in order to, to obtain a local linear representation, we have to locally linearize that. Uh, so, we take the next step of locally linearize these two. As a result, we will say uh, this f. x bar, y bar, mu is, it will be consisting of j 1 1, the Jacobians, j 1 2, j 1 3, j 2 1 and j 2 2 times x bar, y bar plus mu bar times, here also the partial derivative with respect to mu have to be taken, which will be we will take v l x and v l uh, y plus the higher order terms for x bar less than 0. And similarly, there will be similar terms for uh, x bar greater than 0. So, let us first consider only the left half and then we will do the same thing in the right half. There is nothing uh, special about it. So, let us now write down what these guys are. Hmm? For example, j 1 1 is uh, you have uh, taken the partial derivative with respect to x bar, whose partial derivative f 1, which is a function of x bar, y bar, mu bar evaluated at mu bar equal to 0. Hmm? Now, this fellow we are considering the limit, limit here x approaches 0 minus and y approaches ok. Similarly, all these terms will have to be written j 1 2 is limit x bar approaches 0 minus y bar approaches 0 partial derivative with respect to 
y bar whose f uh, 1 x bar y bar mu bar okay similarly j 2 1 is equal to limit x bar Okay. Additionally, we have to talk about these two fellows. Huh? These are the partial derivatives with respect to mu. So, V L X is again the limit, same same uh, limits x bar going to 0 minus and y bar going to 0. This is now derivative with respect to mu bar of the first one. at similarly v l uh, y is limit x bar fine. So, we have defined all these fellows and similarly in the if in the right hand side for x bar greater than 0 you will have similar quantities. Hmm. So, let us first concentrate on the left hand side we will we'll, uh, come back there. Now, notice that the moment we have considered this particular thing we have considered that unit vector in the y direction maps to the unit vector in the x direction. The moment we say that what happens to these quantities? The moment you say that, hmm, notice unit vector along y direction means x equal to 0, y is something that has to map to x, x, x direction. Yes, huh? no, j 1 2 is 1 and j 2 2 has to be 0. Okay. So, the moment we have imposed that condition, we have actually imposed the condition j 1 2 is equal to 1 and j 2 2 equal to 0. So, this fellow is 1 and this fellow is 0. Good. So, what is this now? You would notice that this fellow is nothing but the trace because these two addition is the trace this is 0 therefore, this must be the trace. Hmm. So, j 1 1 must be the trace of the left hand side. So, what remains is this fellow j 2 1 if this is 1 your determinant is these two minus these two and these two fellows product is 0 because this is 0 this is 1 and therefore, this is the negative of the determinant. Huh? So, j 2 1 is equal to minus So, we have uh, now arrived at this equation in for the left hand side only f x bar y bar mu bar is equal to plus the higher order terms which we can ignore for now. Hmm. This is if x bar less than 0. 
in the right hand side you will arrive at the similar thing so this is equal to tau r 1 minus delta r 0 x bar y bar plus mu bar v uh, uh, r x v r y f x bar z over n. I am ignoring the higher order terms now because we are obtaining the local linear representation. Now let us consider these two fellows. Uh, these two, these two. Hmm? Notice that we are considering continuous map. If the map is continuous, then that would immediately demand that this vector is equal to this vector, else the map cannot remain con continuous. As mu changes, the map will remain dis become discontinuous unless these fellows are equal. Hmm. So, V L X, V L Y must be equal to V R X, V R Y, hmm, which we can say V X and V Y. So, we have arrived at that conclusion. Now, we take the make the final uh, uh, coordinate transformation where we say we say x now this is where we arrive at x. So, far we are using tilde, hat, bar, but now we arrive at x the final uh, choice of the coordinate for our convenience is then x bar, but y has to be changed to y bar minus mu v y hmm. and mu is mu bar times we assume that v x plus v y is not equal to 0 then only this works. Huh? Uh, if we make this coordinate transformation then we have x y and mu right. In that case, your map will finally be written as x, y, mu, x, y as the coordinates and mu is the parameter is equal to, in this side it is tau L 1 minus delta L 0 x, y plus mu, then this is 1 0 hmm. for x less than 0 tau r 1 minus delta r 0 x y plus mu for so what i actually done we have actually made a change of coordinates huh? uh, so far your y bar, where is, where is the picture, where is the picture, choice of y bar was parameter dependent, but the moment you have done this coordinate transformation y is no longer parameter dependent, we have freed the, the choice of coordinates from the parameters, parameter is the independent thing that only makes the fixed point move. So, this is the 2D normal form. Just contrast with it the 1D normal form, 1D normal form was G 1 x mu A x plus mu B x plus mu which was for x less than 0 and this is for x greater than 0. This was the 1D normal form, uh, this is 1D and 2D normal form is this, how are they related? The derivation of the 1D normal form was far easier, but the 2D normal form is as you could see we have to go through a few steps, but the link is that if you consider in this 2D normal form the determinant is 0, then it becomes the 1D normal form. If the determinant is 0, it becomes a one, one dimensional normal form. Hmm? So, any two dimensional system 
if you make the determinant 0, it actually becomes a one dimensional system. Here, this line goes, this line goes, and then the tau L becomes equivalent of A, and the tau R becomes equivalent of B. So, in your thought, you should remember that the the determinant is something that makes the distinction between 1D and 2D, but the equivalent of the slope in 1D is here, the trace, trace represents the equivalent of the slope. So, if you make the determinant 0, the trace is nothing but the slope, but so long as the de determinant is there, trace is not, not really the slope, it is actually a, a kind of derivative quantity, addition of the two uh, cross terms. Okay. So, in the next class, I will continue with this particular map, two dimensional map and from there, we will try to obtain it. Now, uh, I will give you a clue to, to handling all these coordinate transformations. Now, see we have done a series of coordinate transformations and through that we have tried to uh, sort of simplify the matter. Hmm. Whatever may be the complication involved in the coordinate transformation, ultimately we wanted to arrive at something simple and that is we have what we have done. Now, you, you could argue that okay, in the left hand side, you could locally linearize it and get a map, get a, get a uh, matrix. In the right hand side also, you could locally linearize and get a matrix, but these two matrices will have four terms here and the four terms there. So, naturally, this representation with two matrices, each term containing non-zero and non-one terms, that will be more complicated than this one. You could argue that, okay, I have a matrix in the left hand side, could not I simply by matrix manipulation obtain this? Yes, you can do that, right. You have a matrix, you know how to do, do matrix manipulation and matrix manipulation is nothing but coordinate transformation. It is basically the same thing as coordinate transformation. So, you could argue that no, I do not want to look at all these coordinate transformations, I simply want to do some matrix manipulation by which I want to arrive at this. Can you do that? You, sh you are, should be able to do that. Huh? I did all these procedures because that gives a, 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 a geometrical intuition, because the fact that y axis maps to the x axis is, is important. Huh? Those things will not be clear if you simply do the matrix manipulation, but you should know how to do the matrix manipulation of a, a, a matrix that has the shape A, B, C, D to hmm, you can you should be able to do that. Okay, that is all for today. We will continue with the next class.